want to share something with you called the big welcome, which I have used over many years. Um, I don't know who actually the original creator of it is, but um, it's so beautiful and I feel so lucky to get to share it with you right now. So I'm going to ask you to just get comfortable in whatever position that you're in, maybe both feet on the ground. you feel comfortable closing your eyes or just gazing, or even if you wanna turn your screen off so that you can allow the words I'm about to share with you to just fully move into you. I am so honored to welcome you all here to the Reimagining Education Conference 4.0, connecting through the power of story sharing and shared values. Take a moment right now to allow yourself to fully arrive. Allow the dust to settle in your mind. Bring your attention to your body, to your breath, to this present moment. You have arrived. Welcome. We welcome your excitement and your trepidation, your clear inquiries and your big question mark faces. We welcome your wide eyes and open hearts right alongside your side eyes and skepticism. You are welcome here. Your culture is welcome. Your ethnic origin is welcome. Your race, your skin hue, accent, food preferences, and all the complexities that make up your cultural identity are welcome here. The histories, the herstories, and experiences of your ancestors are honored and welcomed. We welcome you with all the connections you bring in with you to the children in your lives, your partners, siblings, parents, the animals in your lives, and other loved ones in your communities. You are welcome here. We welcome your spiritual practice, your religious affiliation, your spiritual walk, however you hold that aspect in your life is welcomed. Your love is welcome here. How you love, who you love, and your understanding of what love is are all welcome. We welcome you in all the ways your sexuality has and is unfolding. We welcome you in all the ways your gender has and is unfolding. We welcome you in your ignorance. We welcome you in your privilege. We welcome you in your grief and we welcome you in your guilt and your shame. You are welcome here. Your quirks and ambiguities are welcome. We welcome your humor and we welcome your silent contemplation. Awesome. We, we welcome the parts of yourself that you're still figuring out. We welcome you in your roles as entrepreneurs, activists, healers, there. feelers, intuitives, parents, caretakers, students, artists, change agents, magicians, educators, and warriors. We welcome you at whatever level of mental and physical wellness you are currently functioning. We welcome your introversion and your extroversion. We welcome all the experiences that led you to this moment. Thank you for surviving. We welcome your wounds and your scars, your emotions, all of them. You are welcome here. Thank you for bringing your ancestors with you. We welcome them also. We welcome your sacred connections to the lands on which you were conceived, the lands that hosted your births and the lands of your ancestors. The lands that we are standing upon and all the life that came before us acknowledging the indigenous peoples that inhabit and inhabited the lands where you are. I am on the unceded traditional ancestral and contemporary homelands of the coastal Miwok, Pomo and Wapo peoples. We welcome you to this experience here today where we have prepped the soil for you to sow the seeds of your leadership and visions and stories. Let your roots sink into this nutrient dense soil intertwining with the roots of everyone else here and connecting to the root system of all other living things around here as we collectively build our capacity to lead change and imagine the futures that we all are working so diligently to create. Settle in, 
and welcome. So here we are with all the complexities that we bring as human beings together across the globe. And um, my name is Dana Perlman. And today I will be your guide. And we have a team here. We have um, Christina Bierne, who's, who's here. You can see her screen on. And she will be our poet today. So um, at the end of the call, she's going to weave during our call a poem about our experience and then um, weave her magic. And I can't even say enough about it. So I'll just let you experience it. And we have Sebastian here as well, who's going to be supporting us in many different ways um, behind the scenes. At some point when we come back together after you have an opportunity to do some story sharing, we'll generate a map of the values that emerged. And so he will weave his magic by helping us see them visually in the space. And so um, I'm with the Change Leaders Network and we are a global community of visionary leaders that are working to create systems change, um, really through community, bringing together change leaders together so that we can um, have the support that we need by being in community with each other. We create learning opportunities um, in systems change and, and supporting ongoing learning, lifelong learning and also an opportunity for change leaders to shine their light and to share what it is that they're doing in the world more broadly. Um, so that's what we're about. And today we're right here in the welcome framing and flow. Um, we're gonna have a moment to do some introductions as well with you. And then we're gonna set the stage for the story sharing process, um, which will happen in groups of four you'll have an opportunity to really get connected to four other, to three other humans um, here on this call that's in the conference. So some more um, small group, more intimate um, opportunities. And then we'll come back together after you share your stories and have an opportunity to reflect on the process together, um, have some announcements at the end. We have a gift that we're gonna um, give to you uh, as we part, and then we will close our session and Christina will, will share a poem with us. So that's the plan, right? You know how these things go. Sometimes things change, but right now that's the plan. And um, what we would love to also, here's the purpose. It's really, this is an opportunity to build community and connection through the power of story sharing. Um, this is a methodology that um, comes from the center of peace and reconciliation. So this is something that you can also take with you and use in your work, in the environments that you're doing. So this is a, a process that you can replicate. And this is really a, um, a session that we want to maximize participatory engagement and embodied learning. So um, that's really what we're trying to create here together. And so if you could take a moment now, we've got, um, we've got a few more folks that have joined since we began. What brings you to the story sharing today? So if you could just put your, your location, your pronoun, what brings you to the story sharing today? And um, if you could just share it in the chat box. Why story sharing? You could be in like four or five different sessions, but you chose this one. We just wanna know what is it that drew you here? Yeah. So community building. Stories. Stories are always kind of a, people like to come to things where there's stories. Yeah, stories connect people and touch deeper. Great. Learn how stories can help mobilize political action. 
This particular methodology was originally used in um, Israeli-Palestinian conflict, um, and it was a way to bring together uh, people with very seemingly polarized uh, viewpoints. So this methodology also can be used where there's some high conflict. So, you know, this is a, a great way to um, come together. I oftentimes will use it with groups when um, they're very first forming and first coming together. So it's a great way to just deepen connection. Composting old ideas to make space for new updates. Story sharing circle received a calling uh, that is new to step into my power and dream bigger. Wonderful. Thank you, Vanessa. People love to hear stories. We've got Joe. Uh, many people seem to have lost our national story about democracy and common purpose. I'm searching for ways of moving past this alienation. Wonderful. Okay. So we're going to get to it. We're going to um, take some time now to share the process. I'm going to also, when you go into your breakout rooms, I'm going to give you a, a link to a Google Doc so you have this with you um, in case you get a little lost because it's a lot of instructions. Um, oh, and we've got a storyteller. Yep, great. And so the way this is going to work is that everybody's going to play each role. There's four roles. One person is going to share their story for seven minutes. And the prompt is to share the story of your service to life and care for the earth. What's the origin of that? Go back in time and think about where did you first decide to be in service to life and care for the earth? Okay, so you're going to share the origin story of that. One person, so one person shares the story, one person is going to listen for the facts. So you'll want a piece of paper, and as you're listening, you're going to write down what are the facts of the story as you're listening. The, the second, the other person, the third person is going to listen for the emotions. What were the emotions that emerged in the story? And then the fourth person is going to listen for the values. What were the values that emerged in the story? And then once, um, once the story sharer completes their story for seven minutes, the other listeners are going to share those threads for one minute each. And then at the end of that round, the story sharer is going to report back what it was like to share their story in this way. And then you're going to go to the next round and everyone's going to switch roles. Okay. So um, you'll rotate four times. Each round will be 13 minutes. And then we're going to come back here as a group and, uh, and hear what happened. I'll repeat this again, just because I know it's, it's a lot of information. Um, but things to think about as you're sharing the story. The invitation is really to just listen to the story with a big, full heart. Um, you know, pay full, full attention to the story sharer. Give them your full presence. That's one of the most important pieces is just that you're fully present with the story that's being shared. Some elements, remember how I mentioned that this process was used in Israeli-Palestinian conflict. So some of the elements that make it special for conflict is there's no advice giving. So if somebody shares a story, we're not going to tell them advice about what they can do differently. <laughs> we're not going to ask them questions about their story. And there's no chit chat. We keep it really contained where you only have the story share and those threads happening in that way. Okay. Um, if you finish early, you can allow silence to be part of the conversation. Just allow there to be a moment of silence together where you don't feel like you need to fill the space with talking. Okay. When you're done with all four rounds of the story sharing, you can just come back to the room here if you finish early. But we'll be bringing you back at 55 minutes. 
And I know there's still some people coming in and, and all that at this moment. So I'm going to repeat the process again before we send everyone off into breakout rooms. So I'm going to pause there. Does anybody, before I repeat the process, so if your question is about the process, you don't need to ask a question, but does anybody have any questions before I, I start repeating this again one more time? Does everyone feel clear? Because I don't need to repeat it if it feels like everybody's clear. Would, would anybody here like me to repeat this process one more time? Okay, yes. The theme, so right here, share the origin of your service to life and care for the earth. Think back, take a moment right now and just reflect on when did I first decide that I was in service to life and care for the earth? Think back to that moment. That's the story we're inviting you to share. Okay, and wherever you wanna take the group that you're with, with that story, that's the invitation. You'll share that for seven minutes while other three people are listening for, one is listening for the facts of the story, another's listening for the emotions of the story, and the third person's listening for the values of the story and taking notes. Once the storyteller completes their seven minute story, each of those threads will share back. I heard this was the fact, you went to school in New York City, that's a fact. Or when you went to school, there was some sadness because your friend was being bullied. That's the emotion. And the value was maybe standing up for a friend. So um, friendship, friendship was the value. So that's an example of what that might look like. And then at the end of each round, the story share, after they hear the threads, will be able to go and... Um, share what it was like to hear, to share their story in this way, in this particular structure. And then you'll rotate to a whole new group. So I'm gonna give you um, a link. If anybody has any questions, I highly recommend if you can be on video for your story sharing that you do that in your groups. Here we go. So this has the instructions and whoever's listening for the facts, I would recommend that you're supporting with the time. I will continue to tell you when to rotate and everything, but maybe the facts person um, on each round could be the one who's uh, helping to move the group along. Does that sound good? Everybody feel clear? We would love to hear, what was it like to share your story in this way? What, what did you notice as a story sharer? That you had the undivided attention of three other people. Yeah. And compared to normal life, did that feel different, Joe? Uh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that interesting? Some, and sometimes it's, it's too much, it can be too much attention. You want yeah. a little room to hide, but uh, it was good. It was yeah, good. Yeah, totally, and, I get it. And it's like, okay, um, don't waste these individuals' time. They're listening to what you have to say. So make it worthwhile. Don't BS them. Just put it out there. Mm -hmm. Even if it may make you feel uncomfortable or vulnerable, just go for it. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing, Joe. What else? What else did you notice what it was like to share in this particular format? 
um, for me is a deep sense of being received. Um, and I think in being received, a lot of me, uh, a lot of needs were being met. And I, I never had this in real life before. So it's something new and it can be a little bit mm, scary, but at the same time, it feels good. And yeah. Um, yeah, I resonate with what Joe said about a little room to hide because like there was no place to hide, but in a good way. Yeah. Mm, beautiful. Would you speak your name? Uh, my name is Lee. Lee? Yeah, Lee. Lee. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Lee. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, it, it can be... Um, it's different, right? To actually have someone listen to you for such a, a concentrated moment in time. Um, and then also to notice the contrast of what it feels like in normal life. Sometimes we don't necessarily listen to each other or feel listened to so much. And sometimes we like that. We want to hide. We don't want to be seen. And then we do. We're so complex. <laughs> What else did folks notice about sharing your story? Welcome back. It's good to see you again. I see some smiles. I like the smiles. Um, so we're just we're just sharing right now about. Uh, our reflection on this process. The first question is about what was it like to share your story in this particular format? And so far we've heard from Lee and we've heard from Joe and um, we talked about being feeling um, both enjoying it, but also it's intense to have that much focus on you. Sometimes you wanna not be seen so much, right? You feel very seen. So there's this um, wanting to be seen, not wanting to be seen, and also feeling so much attention that maybe you don't normally feel. So curious to just hear what, what else was it like to share your story in this way? What did you notice? So I'd like to share. Um, so basically when we talk about a story, we are immersed because uh, we are not looking at different lengths. When we, uh, when the audience are listening and when they retell your story in the form of facts, emotions, and values, so it gives you a different perspective altogether, mm. which you may not be kind of acknowledging to your own self. Mm. So when when the third person is listening to your story and uh, giving that safe space and respectful space, uh, you're seen, you're heard there, and you're being acknowledged. Maybe like. When you're telling the story to yourself many times, you may not be reflecting on all these angles. Mm -hmm. So that, that was very powerful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Is it Emma? Yes. Emma. Emma. So yeah. was, it, um, was it helpful to hear your story in a new way by those threads to just get that reflected? Like you got to hear it in a different way, maybe. Yeah? Yeah. 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 Interesting. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. Yes. What else? What else did folks notice about sharing their story like this? Did you did you did you feel like you were able to, even though I mean you're with complete strangers? I don't think anybody was in a group that they knew the people. I'm I'm assuming that I could be incorrect, but you're with total strangers sharing a story that's quite personal, but yet you all have some common threads, right? Because you have this, this common thread of um, serving life, right? Being in service to life and the planet. So that's interesting to share a story with a group of four that are all concerned about the same things, similar things. What else did you notice about sharing your story?
I I would say that I felt um very surprised when hearing people in a way that they were laying the facts and emotions and uh, values that they got from my story. I just feel like they are so intelligent. They are so kind. They are so loving, caring, and supportive. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Beautiful. Thank you, Lei. Okay. We... Did I see if somebody wanted to speak? Yes, Darpan. Uh, yeah, I think I, I was just starting with the thought and I think, uh, you know, uh, in, in our group with Kaim, Kaim Ima and Paras, uh, is that uh, sometimes we don't tell our stories and I think just telling our stories and listening to our own stories and the languaging, I was sharing uh, this, that somehow the languaging of giving, because story is finally a spirit which is trying to come out in a shape or in a form. And I think that languaging, whether it could be, because here we are doing it at an auditory level, we are using words, but just expressing our stories, I think is a very powerful thing. E mm -hmm. Even if it's uh, <laughs> could be for with a couple of friends, but even with our own self, listening to your own story, recording it maybe and listening it. Uh, I think that is in itself is, uh, you know, I think that that in itself is a is very powerful to listen to your own story, and then the magic happens. You know, mm. rest of it all of all of you are magicians. So I'm not going to tell you what magic is, but magic happens. <laughs> so that that is I would love to share. Thank you, thank you, Darpan. Am I saying your name correctly, Darpan? Yes, yes, Darpan, absolutely. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you so much for sharing that. I, I love to hear about the magic happening. We had some magic too happening in our in the in the main room where we had people coming in and getting to hear stories from each other in the in a less structured way. Um, but still it was lovely to get to to chat and, and share stories. So welcome back. I think the group of five just returned. Um, we're just debriefing. We're, we're sharing right now that first question. What was it like to share your story in this particular type of format? As a story sharer, what was it like for you? If anybody has any, any offerings or reflections on what that was like, we would love to hear from you. Oh, uh, I was thinking like, for me, uh, isn't like a really new uh, way to share my story because I I practiced this with some people here in Brazil, uh, non-violence communication and that stuff, but uh, I never did it in English, <laughs> so it's cool because I I don't understand everything very well. It's like I I think I understand, but I, I, maybe I don't. I, I am a little bit shy to to try to uh, have this conversation and that stuff, but uh, it's good to hear the people repeating and and saying again the the because uh, I can understand the language, but I can understand uh, other uh, layers of the story and other ways to listen the same thing and. Also, it's uh, cool because in my in my uh, my break break home, uh, the people are from really different places and diff uh, really different backgrounds. So uh, it's uh, really uh, it's interesting to to think like we are really different, but we also have some things that we share each other and that stuff. So. It's cool. That's great. Thank you so much for, for sharing that. Is it, is it, how do you speak, speak your name? Ciano. Ciano? Ciano. Ciano. Thank you, Ciano. Yeah. Um, yes. It, I didn't even think about sort of the language barrier that can be there. Because when you're listening for facts, right, that's like, the facts of the story. What is it that happened? But then when you're listening for emotions and values, you're, you're reading between the lines a little bit. Yeah. 
Totally. Thank you. Yes, John. Yeah, I just really like this model for discussing these things because uh, if you any any of these things isolated is an incomplete picture, but you know you may not understand somebody's values if you don't understand the facts of their life, and you may not understand the 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 the, the relationship between facts and emotions. So I I think. I felt like it was a it's a really good model that I could apply to my in my local community and my local relationships. So thank you for for offering that. Thank you, John. the The prompt changes based on the group I'm working with. So if you're working in a particular subject, right, what's the common thread between them? So the reason we picked this prompt was because the purpose of the conference is around serving life. And, and earth, right? Being of service. So we used that as the prompt because we knew that that would be the common ground for you. Um, so whatever you're working on, think about a good prompt, a good story prompt um, for folks to share their story around. What was it like for listening? Did anyone want to say anything else about sharing their story before we move on to the facts? Miss Butterfly? Oh, sorry. <laughs> also me. Um, yeah, it felt really empowering to be listened to in this way too, because the res like hearing the response in this way, I think allows me to feel very, um, understood on like different layers. Like, I think usually, like I do a lot of storytelling, but people like usually just do feedback of all sorts of things about how they feel, I guess, not about what they saw. So it's like a really interesting thing to get interest and I think someone in my group also gave me a feedback that I would never have seen about myself so that was really cool to hear wonderful yeah you got to see see a reflection that maybe you hadn't noticed before in your own story I love that beautiful okay all right any other responses to what it was like for you for sharing story What about the facts? What was it like to listen for facts of story? What did you notice about the facts? Uh, can I go, can I share a line about it? Yeah, and also um, I had a question for you, Dana, on, uh, on the design of the prompt. Uh, I think the fact fact was a it was not really <laughs> fun <laughs> listening to fact <laughs> because it I think kind of dried out uh, everything else. I was concentrating on fact, whereas emotion is the best. The second is value. Uh, fact is something which I don't find it too fascinating, but it's an interesting to how to look at fact and what is happening to me. Uh, I was looking at that that why. Well, I was listening to fact, but what was happening to me? <laughs> so I shared more about what was happening to me. Uh, I also wanted to ask if it is okay, maybe you can share a minute, because I think that's a very interesting, what you said about the prompt changing. And this is the prompt which is specifically for this uh, structure in which we are, or uh, we have all assembled here. Uh, how did you come to this prompt? I'm sure, Dana, while you sat down and you looked at the design, there may be more prompts which would have come up. And uh, I'm assuming, let's say, five or six. And then you chose this one. So what was that journey and how did you design, uh, decided uh, that this is a prompt which will go well with the flow of, uh, flow of the evening? I mean, I literally looked at the conference materials and what the theme was for this conference. <laughs> so I, did, I snagged that. You know, it's about being of service to life and earth and reimagining education. We could have done a prompt that was about when did you decide it was important to reimagine, share the story about the time you decided it was it's time to reimagine education. That would have been a great prompt too um, for this group, right? So just trying to really like figure out, and I might design a question with the group I'm working with and say, what's the question that that you all need to be in? What's the story that needs to be shared in this group? There's a group that I'm working with. Um, 
that's about improving interactions between law enforcement and people who use drugs. And so we share a story, we share a prompt around what's what's the origin of your call to service. And that's the common ground there. So it just depends on the group and what, what people are interested in and where the common ground is. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you, Darpan. Um, any other comments about facts? We can open it up too to the emotions and values. Which of these threads do you want to share about? What was it like to listen for one of these threads? What was your experience of the thread? facts, emotions, or values? I wanted to say about listening to the facts. I feel like I'm the least good at that. <laughs> and so it was, I did also feel like to, to echo what Darpan said, I did also feel like it, it was a different experience to share facts than to share the emotions and the values. But I was fascinated to listen to other people sharing the facts. And just to listen to the way other people were capturing and like able to be much more concise than me. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Christina. Anything else about the threads, facts, emotions, values? Uh, I, I have a, a comment and uh, I think it's a question too. Because I was thinking, like, uh, it's difficult to, to when when I am telling the facts that I heard, if the uh, if I have to like uh, separate the what what like the opinions of the the person, the or how how the person uh, see the, the the stuff or or feel the the, the thing that happened or I don't know, and I I was thinking, oh, how can I say it uh, uh, as a fact <laughs> i don't know mm -hmm. if like the question like how can yeah yeah Go when back, you're listening for the fact yeah when you're listening for the facts it's kind of like okay you drove a red car <laughs> you walked up the hill right it's almost like you feel like you're parroting what they're saying like you're repeating whatever it is you heard you're almost saying the same exact words maybe back to them yeah, it might feel like that. Yes, talk block. So that's a joke for some other <laughs> Zoom room. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so uh, there's this practice that is a stupid practice to start with, but it is also a, a, a practice that I've played a lot with is learning to be the last to speak. I don't know. It it just it it's stupid and it's it's clever at the same time. And what happens is let it be facts or let it be emotions, let it be values. All of these are layering layers over layers. It's like a cake. Mm. You're making a tiered cake. And when you're making this tiered cake, the lines become the line reading between the lines becomes easier, you know? Mm. When just the temper of the person's voice changes. Mm. It, if you're paying attention, there's so much information available in the delivery. And I think I did not do justice with my story, but then I don't think anyone did justice with their story. Mm -hmm. If the prompt was designed with us, for example, I think Earth, they, uh, that would have given more nuanced stories. Yeah. Because it was not designed with us in yeah. relationship. It was just something coming out. We had to come into a moving relationship with it and slowly we got there. Yeah. But we could have rolled into it more sweetly. Mm, I love that. You're, you're iterating this process even more. So coming together with the group ahead of time, add another 20 minutes and have the group co-design the prompt. And maybe just, yeah, co-design 
see what many meanings it can be how yeah. false even if it's a bad prompt how is it bad could be a good prompt to a good <laughs> practice to come together right <laughs> talk block you're deep <laughs> You go deep, huh? I love it. Thank you. So let's take a moment. And if you don't mind, we would love to hear what were the values that you heard in your group? And if you could put it in the chat box, what values emerged as, as important and significant in your stories? Oops, what happened? What happened? Did people? Um, we're just going to put in the chat the the um, the the values. What were the values that came up in your story and the stories of those you listened to? If you could just pop them in the chat, what were some common values? Beautiful. So we've got ancestrality, identity, acceptance, empathy, authenticity, leadership self-advocacy, self-validation, identity, caution, compassion, love, enterprise, adventure, into integration, tradition, trust, self-expression, belonging, connection, support, care, compassionate, connection with self, education, truth, purpose, community, service, agency, calling, exploring, curiosity, self-growth, empathy. We're going to create a word cloud of these words in a moment. Um, Sebastian, let me know when you're ready and I can stop screen sharing. So the way with the values, right? Like imagine working with a group, like I would mention the law enforcement and people who use drugs group. Um, we did the story sharing and then we collected the values and made a big map of our shared values in the group. And that way we were able to see again, more common ground and why folks were showing up for this process and co-design. Can you imagine where you might think about using this process or how surfacing values in a group might support your groups in their work together? Anybody have any reflections on that? If I, if I may chime in. Yes, please. Uh, our Kaka Siano mentioned about nonviolent communication briefly. It's something that also came up for me when I was hearing feelings and values. Um, without getting into it, it seems that our feelings arise from underlying needs, to put it simply. Um, and it was really interesting for me in the feeling section, hearing what those underlying needs were. Um, but then beyond that, that it seems to me that our values may simply be those needs we have that we're conscious of, you see? Um, and so that was an interesting way to look at it because in some sense we were inferring what these people valued based on what they were saying. Um, and I wouldn't go as far as to suggest inferring someone's needs in an exercise like this, but um, it did seem to me that there's a really important relationship there. And as far as co-creation goes mm -hmm. um i think starting from a, a bedrock of needs um before jumping to building blocks of values um is maybe a, a foundational layer work i don't know yeah. yeah yeah so what people so having a conversation about what people need right to enter the space together yeah yeah as you said there was a common thread right between all of us um yeah. Isn't... And in our group, it seemed that we were all seeking something and that may well be those needs that we have that are still yet not met. And it may be common among all of us. Yeah, thank you. So I, have a, I have a question. Yes. Isn't, isn't the need, the need to be consistent? Hmm. Well, it sounds like you're starting a whole new conversation. <laughs> that might be, is that a need that you have? Do you have a need for consistency? I don't, but 
isn't what that that's what we're trying to do consistent with the story without being mm-hmm. yeah i was also thinking uh uh came 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 is that your name kayam 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 so kayam i was thinking it, it is a good question but what should be if not values facts and this what else could we put there but yeah that's a different conversation altogether but the need is there even when it's not there i'm going to i'm going to keep us moving cuz we have about 5 minutes left and we're going to share the values visually and then we're going to also have a poem to close our time we are from all over the place welcome reimagining education what a wonderful thing to be spending our time with the big welcome bring your whole self here your heritage your experience your complexity and paradox how you are feeling and being in this moment all of you is welcome and honored stories connect people build community we come to share and learn compost old ideas and water new seeds step into my power and dream bigger find my way lead and mobilize others i am a storyteller it's my place here writer seeks to build bridges across polarization we build unity here we share stories with no advice no questions no small talk we create space and allow silence we hold each other where we are and witness where we were where did i first decide to be in service of life and caring for the earth We listen for facts, emotions and values, separate threads as we listen to the weaver. His parents thought that that he would be their last child, were concerned about jealousy when his brother came, but he was never anything but helpful and concerned with the little, steeped in a family identity of caring for others and the earth, supported by strong cultural traditions. a strong sense of re- responsibility held he felt heard listened to the reflections were accurate to the story and to who he is he black gay expressive man collided with environment traditional religion favela brazil in trauma in a vacuum of support and role models he thrashed and struggled to build himself to become a beacon of authenticity holding space for others to find themselves he is on a mission to recover the right of time something is missing from this mainstream culture he is finding a way to penetrate to something deeper and share it in community he felt thankful for us sharing time she pinballed through life disconnected unaccepted wondering what was wrong with her feeling inferior suffering until she decided that enough is enough the first step she took toward connecting with herself and others she becomes leader helping others connect with themselves through expression creativity today she felt deeply received she felt loved and cared for seen and accepted this feels really good i came to this world a tree hugger 5 years old telling people to boycott mcdonald's because they raise cattle in the amazon get cheap returns for destroying so much life As a grown-up, I traveled to the Amazon like a dream come true. I met some people who cut down rainforest. They had names and faces and children. 
my evolution expanded my empathy, a deeper understanding that if the choice is cutting down some trees or not being able to feed our children, we will all choose the same thing. Polarity dissolves. Polarity dissolves. Us and them becomes we. All the attention here in this room all the attention is here in this room. The presence is nourishing. The organs we are listening with are different. We hear things in reflection that we did not see ourselves. The hearers are so intelligent and kind. Sharing the story is spirit, trying to come out in a shape. All of you are magicians. The magic happens when we share our stories, even when we only share them with ourselves. Usually feedback about our stories is about how the other person feels. In our work today, the listeners helped us to see ourselves. We share stories to find our common ground. Facts, values, emotions are layered like a tiered cake. When we separate them, we can see nuance. If we had helped design the prompt, it could have rolled together more sweetly. We share our values, find them overlap and weave together. Feelings stem from underlying needs. Values come from our conscious needs. We are seeking identity, belonging, growth, empathy, connection, love, trust, truth, purpose, service, support, agency, authenticity. We are finding each other as we seek ourselves. The world comes from the outside in as we come from the inside out. Beautiful, thank you so much, Christina. Christina, the poet, she does this for meetings. She's magic. She comes and she listens to all of us and weaves it together in a beautiful, beautiful poem. All right, everybody, thank you so much for being here. We have a QR code here um, and also on the document I shared with you earlier, if you want to cultivate your change leader story, it's a little guide we put together um, that will help you think through your stories a bit. So you're welcome to that. And as you leave, Oh, and just here's more information about all of us. Um, we'd love to have you join us. Mm -hmm.